visit our sponsor, BattleBox.com. That's BattleBox. Take a look at these boxes, folks. This ain't your girlfriend's box. Subscribe today, and it's like Christmas at your doorstep once a month. And receive hand-picked tactical survival, EDC, and other cool gear from some of the most innovative companies we could find. Kick-ass examples include concealed carry holsters, watches, hammocks, tactical belts, and more. Free shipping for Pro and Pro Plus subscribers. Subscribe today. Enter promo code TV Battle for 10% off your first box. Cancel at any time. It's like Christmas at your doorstep once a month. That's BattleBox.com. Subscribe now. Hey everybody, I'm Christopher Green, and you're tuning into AMTV, Alternative Media Television. It is Monday, January 4, 2016, the brand new year. Boy, do we got a lot of stories coming this year. It's going to be pretty incredible. We've got the upcoming election. We have the not just threat of war, but the actual world war, which has already begun. We saw these tensions heightened over the weekend with these sanctions that are supposed to be lifted, which I think is a farce. In fact, Trump kind of pointed this out. It says almost like it's suspicious, this nuclear deal, the lifting of sanctions. But he doesn't think that it's, he thinks it's negligence. I actually don't. He thinks it's incompetence. I actually don't. I think that the nuclear deal has been engineered to fail because, of course, the United States, along with its Western allies, is going to invade, eventually, Iran, just like it has every other countless country in the Middle East, whether or not it's Iraq or Afghanistan or the non-wars in places like Yemen, etc. Iran is the final target and is a part of Washington, D.C.'s agenda. So I think it's been engineered to fail, to look like they came to some kind of agreement that sanctions were going to be lifted, that they're going to put oil to the market, only to see that fail, as we saw over the weekend. Again, I've been talking about this for years now. With the tensions heightening with the ally that makes up Saudi Arabia and Tehran. Iran. And Saudi Arabia actually cutting diplomatic ties after protests and after the execution, some beheadings, of like 40-odd people and a Shiite cleric. So we're seeing these tensions build right now. We're seeing diplomatic relationships ended in the Middle East between Saudi Arabia and Iran. We're seeing other countries like Bahrain, I believe, support Saudi Arabia. So we've got this war right now between the Sunni nations and the Shiite nations. We've got the Shiite nation of Iran, the Sunni dominant nation of Saudi Arabia, of course, which was also responsible for September 11th, according to the official documented CIA bullshit narrative, even though we know that that was a giant cover up. But supposedly it was Saudi Arabian terrorists and Saudi nationals on the planes that blew up the buildings, right? So, you know, our great ally in Saudi Arabia, the great ally that beheads people on a countless basis without trial, judge, or jury, right? That, that great ally, I mean, how are they any different from ISIS? You know, what the United States keeps fear-mongering to us, an entity, a terrorist organization that didn't even exist a year ago. But now, it's a part of the subconscious and conscious minds of every American. You know, every American can tell you about ISIS, how dangerous they are, right? Uh, how we're fighting a new war against this entity, which really has been created by the CIA and Central Intelligence, and has spawned from what once was Al-Qaeda or Al-Nusra Front or any other of these radical terrorist organizations. Again, you build these countries up, then you tear them down. You build leaders up like Muammar Gaddafi, and then you tear them down. You build nations up and people up like Saddam Hussein, and then you tear them down. So it isn't a given. Let's not be mistaken. It isn't a given that these sanctions in Iran are even lifted so that they can put half a million or a million barrels of oil to market. And again, I've talked about this for years. The stock market, politicians, uh, geopoliticians and pundits are grossly underestimating the geopolitical risk. Even Vladimir Putin listed NATO as an enemy threat to his country over the weekend. Again, this is all building up to war. And it ties into the global economic one world order system that we see being revealed to us right now through the mainstream media and current events. Now, China's stock market was routed yesterday down 7%. In fact, they actually had to close the market down for the day. It was truly a Black Monday. It was down some 7%, although there's been a little bit of a bid on energy with these geopolitical worries. Last time I checked, just a couple of minutes ago, the Dow Jones Industrial Average was down some 450 points. If it ends that, 
In that area today, it'd be the worst open, I think, for a new year in like 84 years or something like that, in almost 100 years. I really think this is just a knee-jerk reaction, though, temporarily, at least when we're speaking with the financial markets. I expected, and I continue to expect, increased volatility. Uh, it doesn't mean that we're going to have an immediate crash tomorrow, though, although it's possible. You know, we could see our circuit breakers break today, just like we saw in China. But I actually think that the high-frequency traders, the algorithms that make up these Google systems and really what is the market today are going to push this market higher leading into the general election with Hillary Rodham, Benghazi Gate, lying scumbag whore Clinton, and Donald Trump. I think they build this thing up a little bit further. We could even potentially see new highs before we see the quote unquote great crash. So this is a very important year because geopolitically we're engaged in war. This is world war today, now in 2016. I mean, even the GOP candidates themselves were openly talking about World War III during the last debate. Again, it's no longer conspiracy theory. Even though people like me and people like you have been well aware that this is reality for over five years now, some of us longer. I knew this before I'd even started this channel over five years ago. But now, it's just in the common narrative. It's a part of the mainstream rhetoric that is being spewed, again, by the propaganda machines owned by the corporate interests that own the politicians, people like Barack Obama. Now, it's going to be very interesting because, of course, we've got a figure like Trump who's self-funded, who's a multi-billionaire, who says he quote-unquote can't be bought, who is going to push back on illegal immigration, and who I perceive to be an actual strong leader. Again, not a perfect leader, but a strong leader at a time when America is at war. And we look back towards you know, history. We look at the periods of you know, World War I and World War II. We look at great presidents like Franklin Delano Roosevelt, FDR, and how they dealt with these egregious, insane, costly, deadly wars where millions and millions of people die. You know, how is America going to fare this time? How is America the Great going to fare this time at a time of economic deterioration, at a time of economic collapse, uh, where our dollar is becoming weaker by the day due to all of these policies at the Federal Reserve, a private illegal institution, which again isn't public at all? How is America going to fare in a new world where Russia, just like Putin was talking about over the weekend, is becoming more and more powerful, having more and more influence in places like the Middle East? And the United States trying to hold on to its grip of power like the spoiled brat rich kid who spent themselves into infinity. How does America fare? So, you know, I think we've already kind of seen our Pearl Harbor moment. We saw September 11, 2001, how that was used as a false flag terror attack event. At the very least, it's a cover-up, whether or not you believe it a conspiracy or not, that the government was behind it or not. It was at the very least a cover-up engineered to institute things like the Patriot Act uh, to create this surveillance police state that we have today in the buildup to war. This war against nations between the rising East and the declining West. And this war we now see in the Middle East, which is including, again, Su includes nations, Sunni nations, dominant nations like Saudi Arabia, fighting Shiite-based nations with connections to Hezbollah and other radical terrorist organizations are now duking it out in this war game. Also, as I discussed just weeks prior to it actually occurring, because again, you can telegraph these events, folks. You can see how the mainstream media is going to position this. You can see how the Maturian candidate Barack Hussein and the membrane Obama is going to position this, because again, it's always been a part of his agenda from day one, before there were any school shootings, before there were any of these engineered attacks, before there was this war of words and rhetoric, etc., that the President of the United States will be moving very soon, maybe this week, with executive action on gun control. Again, it ties into finance, it ties into global economics, it ties into politics, and then you just basically move the sheep, folks. That's what they're doing. They move the masses to support the war, the illegal wars that they started, so they can send you to the front lines to accomplish the agenda that they had initiated from the get-go that they've already decided on behind closed doors in the smoking room years ago. A continuation of George W. Bush and now what has become Barack Obama's insane in the membrane administration. War in the Middle East, he's coming after and for your guns, mark my words, before he leaves office. It would not surprise me to see executive action in the not-too-distant future. Well, again, 
Uh, we've been telegraphing this to you, the viewing public, for years now. I said from day one, from the day that Barack Obama became president of the United States, there was going to be a war on guns and a war on the Second Amendment. And the first thing that these dictatorial leaders do is they disarm you. And it's exactly what the president of the United States is doing. So this has been front page news over the holiday because, again, they always announce this while the president is on vacation in Hawaii spending like $70 million a day or something like that, flying Air Force One as he goes to attend global climate change summits, but is just, you know, putting all these gases out into the atmosphere. But this is on the radar now, this week, executive action on gun control. It might take 30 days or something like that for them to iron out the details. But don't be mistaken, Barack Obama is coming after the guns. At the time of, you know, increased tensions here in the United States, we see with the Hammond family out, I believe, in Oregon right now, where militiamen have taken hold of some federal buildings, and we see another Clive and Bundy situation here in the United States of freaking America. Again, this war on the Constitution, this war on the First and Second Amendment, part of the agenda. Again, it's exactly what these dictatorial leaders do time and time again throughout history, whether or not it's Mao or it's Hitler or it's any other of these figures. They take the guns first, they confiscate your ability to defend yourself, to, def to form well-regulated militias before implementing further and further tyranny. And it really has been a death by a thousand cuts here in the United States, step by step through a very uh, well thought out and planned and intended strategy. Again, by the Obama administration, by Barack Obama, the President of the United States, and the corporate interests that own him. So a fantastic year in that regard, in that there will be even more tyranny, more war, more destruction of our financial system, and all of this is building up into a crescendo in the not too distant future. I'll be covering all of this in great detail in 2016. I want to thank all of you for tuning in, your continued support. I expect big things here at AMTV Alternative Media Television this year. Thank you so much. Get this video out everywhere. Make it viral, hard hitting it in your face, and click the link below to support our sponsor.